All right. Well, hi, uh, I'm Andrew and I'm really indecisive. Normally that's okay since it just affects me and my personal development and my ability to watch movies. But unfortunately, I'm also a writer. And the thing about writing is that you're always making decisions. Every word you choose, every line break you insert, every little bit of punctuation, it's just countless decisions. And through all of these decisions, there's a lot of pressure to make the right one. Every time uh, you pick a word, it's, it's, there's all of these wrong choices to make and there's one right choice to make and you're expected to find the right choice. And I don't necessarily believe that right choice exists. And it, to be honest, makes me uncomfortable having to choose a word because I, uh, I feel guilty leaving out all the other words because they were perfectly fine. They didn't do anything wrong. They deserve to have their time of day. So um, I want to find a way to not exclude them. So I made a thing. This thing is called BML or the Blur Markup Language. It's a programming language for writing text that changes. Uh, rather than writing exactly what you want people to read, you express the possibilities. And these are then chosen for you on demand. So here we have um, a basic summary of what the language is and a bunch of different ways to write it out. Like we can spell BML lowercase as I prefer or uppercase. Uh, or you can fully spell out the acronym, and then we can describe it as maybe it's lightweight or hacky, all these different things that can happen. Um, and you can see five different ways that it's been realized below. And hopefully you can kind of see that all of the details change and the number of permutations that could occur here is really quite large. Um, but at the same time, the shape of it, the meaning behind the text somehow stays the same. So let's talk about the language a little bit. Inline choices, we have these, um, and you've already seen these. So this is just listing a bunch of different things that can happen, and we can assign different weights to them. So in this case, we're doing A, B, and C. A is going to happen 50% of the time. B is going to happen 30% of the time. And then C is going to take up whatever remaining probability we have. And below in all these examples, you kind of see uh, a rendition of this, this uh, code a couple of different times. So we have C, A, 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 B. Um, we can also apply rules over larger swaths of text. So in this case, we're taking the word and, and we're looking for it everywhere. And every time we encounter that, we might use the word and, or we might insert an ampersand instead. We can also do more complicated things like running arbitrary JavaScript. Um, in this case, we're using a regular expression matcher that's just looking for the first letter of words. Um, and it's going to then uh, capitalize that. And we've run this a few times over this really lovely quote by John Cage. I have nothing to say, and I'm saying it, and that is poetry as I need it. And the different capitalizations that occur kind of apply different weights into the text and shape the sentence in, in different ways and highlight different thoughts. And I think that's really interesting. Um, it can do a bunch of other things. So we have a, a standard library of common functions. Standard library, it's actually like three functions, but they're, they're useful things to have around. Um, that are then available inside the eval API. Um, we can call inline function calls. We can do markdown rendering. We can escape blocks and have literal text blocks. Um, and we can also reproducibly generate the same text by pinning a seed. Um, and it also works in a browser. So you can put it in your websites. Um, in terms of how it's actually built, um, it's just a bunch of bad JavaScript and truly evil uses of the eval command. Um, and we're not going to talk about it. Um, so some of the things that uh, I've done with BML, um, this is a, uh, an excerpt from the source of a dynamic poem I made. And you can see the number of chance elements and permutations starts to become very high very quickly. But at the same time, again, the larger structural ideas can retain their shape if that's something that you want. And you can see here's a rendition of that poem in full. Um, I'm not going to pause and dwell on it too much, but you can go back if you like and check it out more. Um, this was installed, well, uh, so this is a, a, a contraption I made that I uh, endearingly called the Poetron. Um, it's just a box with a receipt printer and a big glowing button. And when you press the button, it generates a poem using BML and prints it on a receipt for you to take home. Uh, I installed this uh, in a gallery, CJ1 gallery in New York City. 
uh, in February, I think. And uh, I think visitors had a lot of fun coming by and pressing the button and uh, printing out versions of that, that poem we were just looking at um, and taking it home with them. Also, because it's embeddable on websites, I've made blog posts with this and kind of covertly just published them as if they were well-behaved blogs. Um, but in fact, the text does change every time you refresh the page. Um, and really excitingly, uh, I'll be publishing a full-length book of chance poetry with Ost Press in 2021. We'll be publishing one or a couple physical versions of the book while simultaneously publishing it online, where visitors will be able to explore the gazillion different versions of the poems and they'll be able to kind of discover different versions of the poems and share them with other people. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm super excited about this. Um, and just for kicks, this presentation also is generated with BML. And as I speak right now, this is the first time I'm seeing this presentation. I, um, and I can show you the source here. Um, so like one fun thing we're doing is every time we have an exclamation mark, we repeat it some arbitrary number of times. Um, and there's a bunch of just like stuff that's going on here. Um, so more seriously, why, why is this interesting? Um, I think dynamic text makes the reading experience more intimate and invites a more critical mode of reading. Maybe by reading several versions of the same text, the reader can come closer to the underlying thoughts of the writer. At the same time, it's kind of a trope that writing is already a process of self-discovery. But as a, a writer interacting with this medium, I found a surprising and rewarding feedback loop between me and the text that comes out of this. Seeing my words scrambled and rearranged and really out of my hands in some sense, has radically changed the way that I write and think about text and my own style. And like I mentioned at the beginning here, I think this calls into question the idea of the author and the assumption that there exists a correct text, that there exists a best way to make a thing. And at the same time that it challenges authorship, I think it challenges ownership. A question I'd like to leave you all with here today is what does it mean to own a text that nobody wrote. Thank you so much. Uh, you can find out more about this language at bmllang.org. That's bml-lang.org. Uh, you can find me online at andrewyoon.art, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you. <laughs>